This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Okay, this is a fun one. This is something I've been meaning to do for a little while. Recreate one of my favorite optical illusions. It normally features the faces of celebrities, but I thought I'd do it with a mixture of popular YouTubers and some of my personal favorite YouTubers. I mean, there's some overlap between those two groups, but uh, anyway, stare at the cross in the middle of this image. Either side you'll notice there are images of YouTubers and in a moment I'm going to change those images. I'm going to cycle through some different YouTubers. All the while you need to stare at the cross in the middle. Here we go. You should start to notice that the faces become distorted, like their features become exaggerated. They become almost like caricatures of themselves. I promise you that the pictures are undoctored. If you don't believe me, you can skip back in the video and watch again, but this time look directly at the faces. Pause the video if you need to, to convince yourselves that these pictures are unedited. It's bizarre, isn't it? It's called the flashed face distortion effect, sometimes just called the alien faces illusion. Some YouTubers are conspicuous by their absence. That's because the criteria for the images is quite tight. They need to be facing forwards ideally looking down the lens, and it needs to be an image that I have the right to use, so Creative Commons or something like that. So I couldn't find an image of PewDiePie, for example, that fulfill those criteria. You may have seen some faces there that you don't recognize. That might be because they're smaller channels that I really like. Links to all the channels are in the description in the order that they appear on the left-hand side of the illusion, so check out that list. There's an interesting meta point to be made about effects like this, which is that they're often discovered by mistake. Like this one was discovered by Sean Murphy. He stumbled across it in 2011. And that means if you look through the literature, we often see a description of the effect before we have an explanation of the effect. So with this one, we have some hypotheses about what's happening in your brain when you experience the illusion, but no solid theory yet. So I thought I'd run down the current thinking on the subject. So it's somewhat related to another optical illusion that I really like to do with faces. With this one, you present an upside down face, in this case me, and it looks normal until you turn the face the right way around. And suddenly it becomes very clear that there's something wrong. The eyes and the mouth are upside down. The bizarre thing is you just can't tell when the face is the wrong way around. James Grimes sent me this one. He's got a channel about mathematics. It's really good, link in the description. So his face looks normal when it's upside down. It's only when you turn it around that you realize his eyes and mouth are upside down. It's called the Thatcher illusion because it was first discovered again by accident when someone was manipulating an image of ex-British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. So in keeping with that theme, I've made this one. This is current British Prime Minister Theresa May. Looks normal when it's upside down, turn it around. Only then do you notice that the eyes and mouth are upside down. Scary stuff. We have a pretty good understanding of how the Thatcher illusion works. So basically there's a region of our brain, a module if you like, whose job it is to recognize faces, to process facial information. And actually that part of the brain is kind of trigger happy, which is why we see faces where there aren't any, like look how happy this house is, or look how swole the Pope is in this slab of marble. It turns out that this module in the brain is quite holistic in its approach to facial recognition. Like when you recognize someone's face, a lot of what's happening is you're recognizing um, the relative positions of the facial features, like how far away the eyes are from the mouth and, and that sort of thing. And this neural network has been trained over millions of years of evolution using stimulus of people facing you, like upright faces. Which means that when a face is presented upside down, this neural network it can't handle it. it, it, it breaks down. And so your brain falls back on analyzing the individual features. And when it does that, it's like, oh, okay, the eyes look normal, the nose looks normal, the mouth looks normal, like some of them are upside down and some of them are right way around, but who cares, you know? So that seems to be the explanation of the Thatcher illusion. So what's that got to do with the flashed face distortion effect? Well, the Thatcher illusion kind of hampers the facial recognition part of your brain by presenting the face to you upside down. And it seems that that part of the brain may be hampered as well by you not looking directly at the face like you do in the flash face distortion effect. So the rest of the explanation, well actually there's two 
possible explanations. One is that faces suddenly changing is not something that happens in the real world. It's not something we've evolved to cope with. It's only something that happens on television screens, right? Like someone doesn't suddenly change into someone else. Um, we can cope with it when we're looking directly at the face, but when we're looking off center, instead what our brain does is assume that um, the facial expression of the person has changed, but the person hasn't changed. What that means is, because when you switch from one face to the next, the proportions of the face change quite a lot, if that was a change in facial expression, then it would be a huge change in facial expression. It would be a, a, a grotesque change in facial expression. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is something called uh, neural adaptation. And that's an amazing thing. And one of my favorite examples is um, motion after effect. So to experience motion after effect, stare at the center of this image. Don't look around it, just at the center. If it's small in your field of view, then get your head closer to it. Bring your phone closer to your face, for example. And I'm gonna keep this on the screen while I talk. And then in a minute, I'll give you some more instructions. So keep staring at the center. And what you're doing is stimulating neurons in your brain whose job it is to detect and interpret motion from your field of view. And so by keeping your eyes fixed, you're stimulating the same neurons again and again. And this is something that happens with neurons all the time. If you continuously stimulate neurons, they eventually stop firing. So your sense of motion will actually become dampened. But then what happens is when you look at something that isn't moving, you'll experience the opposite of the motion you were experiencing before because the neurons responsible for the opposite motion are still up and running, if you like. So if you now look at the palm of your hand, it will seem as if your hand is moving in the opposite way, growing and shrinking opposite to the image you were just staring at. So that's motion after effect. It's the result of neural adaptation, this idea that if you're constantly stimulating a neuron, the neuron stops firing. So in the case of the flashed face distortion effect, if you're staring off to the side and you see a face with a large chin, for example, then those neurons that say large chin are being stimulated. They're being stimulated continuously because you're staring at it. And uh, so they eventually stop firing. And then when you see a normal sized chin, um, that it seems a lot smaller as a result. That's the idea anyway. The process of scientific discovery often goes like this. I've got a hypothesis for how the world works and I think it's right because it describes what I see around me, but it also predicts things that I haven't seen before. So I'm gonna go and look for those things like gravitational waves that were predicted by Einstein's description of gravity. And when you find those things, you don't have to explain them because you already have an explanation. That's why you were looking for them in the first place. And sometimes you've got a theory, but it's incomplete. So you're looking to fill the gaps, like you're looking for a particle that could be the explanation for dark matter. But sometimes the journey of scientific discovery goes the other way. It starts with someone noticing something strange. And so then the first thing you do is describe it. And then once you've described it, you come up with some hypotheses for the explanation of it. And then crucially, you build experiments to test your hypothesis. And that's what people are doing now with the flashed face distortion effect. And that's great because maybe we'll discover something new about the workings of the human mind. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's an update on the project. As you know, I'm building a website with my dad to show off his science articles. And uh, this update was gonna be me saying that I finally got the templates how I want them. In reality, I did it in about a day. Um, like it's genuinely really easy to do and they look great out of the box. I've tweaked it a little bit so it's not gonna look like anyone else's website. I'm kind of just twiddling my thumbs now waiting for my parents to come over so I can work on the content with my dad. And uh, it's good because I'm not gonna have to show him how to install this or upgrade that or patch this. All of that's taken care of. You never have to do any of that with Squarespace. Um, and then we'll buy the domain name, we'll do that through Squarespace and then we'll launch it. Can't wait. As for you, you should go to squarespace.com today for your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your project, go to squarespace.com forward slash Steve Mold for 10% off your first purchase. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.